On February 21st this year, Nvidia stock did this. This wasn't just any uptick. We have just witnessed the largest single-day equity surge the world has ever seen. To put things in perspective, today GE edged close with $175 billion in market cap, IBM stand at $177, and Adobe at $246 billion. In one remarkable day, Nvidia's valuation ascended by a figure that is more than the entirety of any of these well-known companies. Its revenue almost quadrupled on year-on-year -year basis, from $6 billion to $22 billion. But with big jumps come a big question. Is it over? Is it too late to invest in the king of AI, or is Nvidia just getting started? After all, when Nvidia dropped this financial bombshell during its latest earning call, nobody was expecting it groundbreaking 265% increase from last year. That's a total of $60.9 billion for the entire fiscal year. And now Nvidia's rubbing shoulders with giant companies like Apple, Amazon, and Microsoft. But it's not just about raking in bucks. Nvidia's operating income and net income have skyrocketed, multiplying seven and six times over respectively. Now if you're like me, you might be wondering, is Nvidia's incredible run over? or maybe I can still catch the tail end of this roller coaster. In this video, we are going to examine Nvidia's fundamentals. Our objective is to provide you with good understanding of Nvidia's financial health and future prospects. We are diving into the numbers and facts to review why Nvidia could still be on the upswing. By the end of the video, you shall have most of the key insight needed to make informed investment decision about Nvidia. Hi, my name is Zee, I'm a management consultant, and I've been investing in Nvidia stocks since 2018. In this channel, I cover company fundamental analysis on stock in my portfolio. Many financial content on the internet tends to be very subjective or overly complicated. I try to do the opposite by bringing you simple yet professional analysis of good companies. Now let's delve into what makes Nvidia a good company worth watching. Let's consider the four pivotal questions every investor should be asking. One, what's a word on Wall Street about Nvidia? Are the investors caught up in a formal field frenzy, driving the stock to precautious height? Understanding market sentiment is also key to determine if now is a golden opportunity to invest in the stock. Two, has Nvidia's stock price just temporarily had a shot of espresso, or is it generally set for the long haul? We will be looking at Nvidia's fundamentals, gauging if the hype around this stock is real. Three, with all this research information, is it possible for us to whip up our own price target for NVIDIA? To answer that, I will try to share my personal valuation model for NVIDIA as food for thought. And finally, what scenario could play out for NVIDIA's going forward? Let's not just hope for the best, but also plan for the rest. I'll sketch out the bear case scenario for NVIDIA to ensure we're mentally prepared before making any decision. Before we go on, it's important for you to know that although NVIDIA's earning was a positive surprise, it is driven mostly by one business segment, data center. Of the $22 billion it earned in Q4, data center segment represent 82% of the quarter's total sales. This revolution has sparked a whirlwind of debate and discussion. In short, Wall Street seems divided on Nvidia stock's future. With one side, there's talk of impending correction, while on the other side, there are believers in Nvidia's unstoppable growth. Let's delve into both viewpoints and see what's brewing. This way, we can cut through the market noise and focus on the essence of each argument, laying out a clear path for our discussion on Nvidia's trajectory. Camp A seemed to be worried about the idea that there is a bit of tech gold rush happening and everyone is scrambling to stake their claims in the AI frontier. Not just Nvidia, they point to the MAG7, big tech giants leading the AI charge. This chart shows us that each player is betting big on AI, from reshuffling entire division to pouring billions into AI ventures. Nvidia's overly concentrated revenue with data center further exacerbated the concern. Here are some of the notable persons who seems to be bearish on Nvidia stock, which include Josh Brown from CNBC, Professor Diamond Darren, who famously said Nvidia is valued at $240 per share. On the other hand, in the optimistic camp B, we have big names like Costin from Goldman Sachs, BCG's Panaro, and Rascon from Bursin, who are bullish on Nvidia stock and other large tech firms. Their optimism isn't without reason. The Max 7 are betting big on AI. As you can see, their earning call are just saturated with AI chatters. This is because the focus on AI is a huge part of why with their valuation stand tall with an average of 30 times PE multiple, hovering over the S&P's average 18 times. 
not only the market recognize the long-term potential of AI, investors choose to vote with their money. David Costin also noted in a recent analyst report, the current investors are paying more attention to the valuation and fundamental of large growth stock rather than blindly pursuing growth, reducing the risk of overall market bubble. Compared with the late 90s, the current valuation of US Max 7 is actually reasonable because their strong earnings actually support their higher valuation. So in summary, both camps have barely risen. With Wall Street sending mixed signal like this, it's a fertile ground for speculation, swinging both ways with risk and reward. It underscores the importance of cautious approach to investing in media. That's why it's important to ask the crucial question, how sustainable is a price growth? To address this burning question, we must explore two areas. One, although NVIDIA's pioneer status in AI revolution is clear, but what factor could decelerate its momentum? Two, as we dig into the crystal of AI future, where does NVIDIA fit in the radical evolving tech landscape? To answer the first question, understanding the adoption and the impact of technology is key. We all know technology boosts productivity and spurs market creation, but this typically happens not at once. Analysts often use a technology adoption curve to plot a technology's life cycle from innovation to widespread acceptance. So far, there's chatter about AI space on the lack of killer app like ChatGPT, and skepticism about the enduring need for a once AI data center. This could be the very reason that decelerate NVIDIA's upward momentum. Just recently, David X and Chamas Palihapitiya both shared their opinion on the OEM podcast, and I quote, at some point, all of this spend has to make money. Otherwise, you will look really foolish spending 20, 30, 40 billion dollars. If you look at the revenue chart and ask, who can spend 22 billion dollars? It's all big tech since they have the money sitting idle. 22 billion dollars probably need to generate 45 billion dollars revenue. What you are seeing is more about big company muscling their balance sheet and being able to go to NVIDIA and say, I will give you a committed purchase for the next few quarters, rather than here's a product that make money, which I need enormous computer resource for. It's not the latter. This implies we might still be on the initial innovation phase of this technology's journey, and also suggests NVIDIA's earning potential could be shorter than expected. Yet, it's NVIDIA's role as a backbone of the AI infrastructure that has kind of brought it to prominence. Let's make a very simple analogy to explain this. Picture NVIDIA as a go-to mining pick shop in a gold rush era, supplying gear to eager yet inexperienced miners. These amateurs, while not making a fortune from their work, are willing to spend on high-end gears in hope to strike it big. In a world where gold rush has suddenly become the latest craze, the real question is who is cashing in on the gold rush? The gear provider, like NVIDIA, stands to reel in profit as a supplier of choice. So to answer the question how NVIDIA will be positioned in the market of the future, it will be a lot like the mining shop. During the gold rush, in the grand scheme, it's about the buzz around gold rush itself. As long as folks are eager to mine gold, the local mining shop will thrive. With AI search being more than just a flash in the pan, NVIDIA's prospects look promising. I think one thing Wall Street analysts can all agree on is that AI is a technology that is going to change our future, and any hype around it is unlikely to vanish as quickly as some doomsayers suggest. Today, NVIDIA's AI infrastructure is widely adopted across the cloud services and over 40,000 companies globally, moving 75% of the top 500 supercomputers. This isn't just about the present, it's about NVIDIA's future earnings. Their strong holding AI infrastructure means that even if individual player drops out, their demand for NVIDIA's technology persists. This, coupled with their significant year-on-year -year growth in data center revenue, makes a compelling case for their lasting demand. Let's be clear. AI isn't just a piece of tech puzzle, but the very framework our future production and technology landscape is built upon. Based on how AI is evolving, as it realized quite a long time ago that they need to pivot from providing a fundamental AI infrastructure to a broader range of AI applications. Thanks to their comprehensive speed of AI software and platform, NVIDIA today has created a one-of-a-kind ecosystem allowing different players in AI space to thrive. From a pure production perspective, higher hopper GPU shipment along with NVIDIA's NT band architecture is a primary driver for this quarter's sales and margin of performance. As we mentioned before, the supply of their hopper architecture chips is catching up to its feverish demand, and they're gearing up for production ramp at this very moment. During the earning call, NVIDIA CFO also said this, supply of hopper architecture products is improving. Demand for Hopper remains very strong. We expect our next generation product to be supply constrained as demand far exceeds supplies. There's no way we can reasonably keep up with the demand in the short term as we ramp up. 
and next generation BU100 AI accelerator are scheduled to launch within this year. This is also confirmed by the supply chain side as news coming out from Taiwan's focus on industrial internet just days ago that the H200 and B100 will use TSMC's 4 nanometer and 3 nanometer process respectively. The next gen's product already a strong order volume and max of production is a good evidence for yet another strong quarter. Bank of America also forecasted that Nvidia's accelerated sale will continue to grow exponentially well into 2025 while reaching 80% market share. So it thinks Nvidia's strategic position remains unshaken. Nvidia provides the following outlook for fiscal Q1 2025. Revenue is at $24 billion, sports margin at 76.3%, operating expenses at $3.5 billion, other income at $250 million, tax rate at 17%, plus or minus one. And Nvidia has set the bar even higher, and this staggering 239% jump year over year. Edging past the analyst projection of only a 7% quarter growth, once more the beta and NASDAQ then is the engine behind this growth. While gaining revenue might see a dip, reflecting the cyclical nature of the notebook itself, this pattern is expected to persist in 2025. Looking at last decade of Nvidia's earning data, revealed a trend that is hard to ignore. Nvidia has been downplaying growth forecast consistently. Take a look at this chart, see those solid circles? They are the financial home brands Nvidia has been hitting each quarter, while the hollow one represents the expectation of Wall Street analyst. And over the past 10 years, Nvidia has only missed revenue forecast 3 on top of 40 pines, so when they talk about high demand, it's probably a more reliable bet to trust this company. We talk a lot about earnings news speculations, now it's time to bet it into the deep end of the number. So what's the real value of NVIDIA? There are really three things every investor should look for. First, there's a pop-down view. What is a total addressable market? We need to map on just how big this playground is, almost less a pie NVIDIA's poised to play. And the second one is the fundamental of the company. We need to zero in on the company's heartbeat, what is the potential for future earnings, and tell NVIDIA turn their revenue into profit efficiently. Three is a risk factor. How my negative news sway the stock price? What external factor might the fund investor sentiment in the full term? First, let's look at market size. Estimating the size of the AI market is really difficult. It's like predicting the weather in a decade. You'll probably get a different forecast from every expert that you ask. With conservative figures circling around like $1.8 trillion by 2030, a um, real tech-oriented investor like Cassie Wood suggests a whopping $30 trillion in her base case scenario, and this Sun Altman recently advocating for $7 trillion injunction into AI chips, it's clear that the stakes are very high. For our estimate, let's sketch out a $5 trillion market size for starters. As for NVIDIA, with its current dominance in the data center business, Many analysts will agree that a company commands about 75% market share. Now it's likely this number will eventually be etched away by other competitors. Even with a modest 25% market share, we are looking at a potential revenue multiplication of more than 10x in the next 5 to 7 years. This is why some people are calling for to 8,000 by 2030. Again, you need to be aware that this is only back of the envelope mass, but it does point to the horizon where Nvidia could be pulling in revenue in trillions of dollars, a figure that is hard to ramp our heads around. Remember, this is a ballpark figure. There's also production capability that will ultimately set the pace. For now, we are playing a game of educated guess. Now let's talk about model calculations. Instead of showing you a full boring spreadsheet, I'll cut out the important part and make you this nice PowerPoint presentation. I'll admit, most of this number can be referred back to some other source that I trust, either from a credible analyst or from earning calls, uh, or sometimes a friend who is working in the field. Uh, I also might be wrong, which happened to everybody. Feel free to leave a comment down below to let me know what I can do better or any mistake I might have made. Thanks. Based on the historical data center uh, breakdown, next phase of production rollout for Nvidia seems to be very promising. I think it's going to capture even more market share, and many industries are adopting the AI cloud server. Therefore, based on what I can see, the number of cloud AI servers used by NVIDIA's customer will likely to 4x, leading me to believe that 80% year-on-year growth is not unrealistic. If you plot all the revenue growth number from my model, here are the revenue projections from business segment other than the data center. I do not want to be too bullish on them just yet. Uh, gaming will still be one of the big ones, but I was modest single-digit growth rate for that. And as for data center, I think it will continue to grow at 70 to 80% rate year on year. To support this kind of valuation, one really have to believe that the data center business is going to take off. On the margin side, first, Nvidia makes crazy margin 
return over the last few quarters with relatively modest growth, both in its operating expense and R&D expense. And Media also has some eye-popping margins that you normally expect from a high-flying SaaS company. Now, in the land of tech, software is king of margin because once the development is done, the cost to serve another customer is really minimal. Nvidia, on the other hand, achieves this margin without a proportional spike in cost of sales, operating expenses, or R&D cost. This is quite remarkable. Take a look at this chart, and you'll see Nvidia's EBITDA margin are in the league of their own towering above both AMD and Intel. Let's break down NVIDIA's financial and put this EBITDA margin under microscope. For those who are new to the term, EBITDA just stands for earning before interest, tax, and depreciation and amortization. Uh, it is a key indicator for company's operation efficiency before accounting for financial decisions, taxes, uh, and non-cash expenses. Their operating expenses has remained stable, which means that the boosted margin we're seeing is mostly thanks to NVIDIA's ability to command higher price due to the rarity of their chips. This this quarter's 72.7% gross margin has cascaded into a remarkable 54.1% operating margin and a jaw-dropping 48.9% net margin. Meanwhile, the sector medium was only at 2.25%. Looking ahead, NVIDIA's projects this margin will hover around the mid-70 mark, roughly constant quarter over quarter. Drilling into the detail, I'm thinking the R&D at about 10% of the revenue. The company expects a $3.5 billion in operating expense next quarter, as GNA, quite low as 3%, and the guided tax rate of 17%. This math gets out to a future EBITDA margin in the neighborhood of 60%. It's a quite robust earning figure that aligns with our recent report of 63.5%. As if this is not already good enough, the icing on the cake is that NVIDIA has been buying back stocks, reducing the total share of standing. That's a great news for the current shareholders, assuming earnings keep up their pace. We can expect more buybacks. NVIDIA is also poised to make strategic investment, significantly increase capital expenditure for acquiring business or new equipment. After refactoring these expenditures, we'll get a clearer price of NVIDIA's future free cash flow. And with NVIDIA's cost of capital running at a wrong at about 18% compared to the return uh, on investment capital at 103%, they are a company that is generating far more from their investment than it costs to fund them. We'll input these figures into the model, setting the stage for our final valuation analysis. The reason why we're not forecasting any longer than three years is because other competitors will join the race when the margin stays relatively elevated. We can also forecast the free cash flow for the company, which grow at a very high double-digit rate for the next three years uh, due to the high margin and sales number. In case anyone wants to check the detailed number, here is a reference sheet that I used. To calculate the terminal value after three years, we can reference the historical EV to EBITDA ratio. For NVIDIA, it sits around 60%. Uh, also include the other two companies, uh, AMD and Intel for YouTube reference. And finally, after considering everything, I gave NVIDIA a price target of $1,238. You can also use this information as a base for your own analysis. And there you have it, the number crunched and the model pointing us to a price target for NVIDIA at around $1,200. This figure envisions NVIDIA market cap to a monumental $3 trillion. But before you pour all your savings into the stock, let me just warn you that this is not a financial advice. It's only an educational video full of infographics to show people the right information in an interesting kind of way. If you've stuck with me all this way here and found some values in our financial analysis, I'll be more than grateful if you would smash that like button, hit subscribe, and stay tuned for more financial breakdowns. I'm sure by now you've heard a lot of positive things about the media, but we're not done yet. The least thing you need to be aware of is a risk when it comes to investing in NVIDIA stock. Their bear case scenario from technical analysis perspective, there are just a lot of warning signals that the stock is severely overbought. NVIDIA stock is currently valued at price to earning ratio of 34 times PE reflecting investor confidence in its historical earning performance. When stacked against the broader stock market average, NVIDIA's valuation is indeed a lot more expensive. It's not just a general market either. Even when you're home in the semiconductor sector, average PE ratio is only at 26 times. NVIDIA stands out as a pricier pick. This premium is something that investors might raise an eyebrow at, suggesting that on paper, the stock is trading at a very rich valuation. Second, there are concerns over NVIDIA's revenue growth speed. Current revenue isn't really enough to justify this valuation. The Wall Street consensus believe that NVIDIA's profit we need to balloon to about five times their current size within the next five years to make sense of the valuation premium. The third risk factor we have to consider is a Wall Street narrative and how negative news can swing market sentiment. There is a trend where mainstream media draw parallels between current stock and the historic examples, notably the comparison between Nvidia and Cisco during the dot-com bubble. 
which I find amusing because you can stack more chart from other stocks which have blown up in the past and they all look similar. However, jokes aside, it's important for us as investors to sift through the noise and learn from historical mistakes without losing context. Cisco peak of March 2000 hit around $80 a share, soaring to the height of this world's largest company by market cap at that time, and its PE ratio was 220. And yet, despite never really faltering in its core business post-crash, Cisco stock plummeted by over 80% and has never returned to those peaks, currently trading around $50. So what clipped Cisco's wings? Not just a market downturn, the deceleration in the growth was enough to turn the tide. The media could be putting up solid numbers as we projected, but if Wall Street gates shift towards the next shiny object due to a perceived slowdown in the growth, money will inevitably chase the new thing. This is reminiscent of the recent shift in sentiment around Tesla stock. Let's not forget, we are chartering through different waters now in the days with the dot-com bust. Market PE levels are not at a sky-high level, there are more government funding banking for the AI revolution. Companies also have substantial earnings to justify their data center investment, and for perhaps the first time since the dot-com era, we have a new technology that's significantly enhancing productivity for both individual and enterprise. And there you have it, we have wrapped up our dive into NVIDIA for today. But the journey doesn't end here. The AI investment landscape is rich with development that will be unfolding in the upcoming months. I'm excited to continue this adventure with you, bringing in fresh insight on stock investment, breaking down the nifty gritty of fundamental analysis, and much more. Thanks for tuning in, I'm Z, and I will see you in the next video.